guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back seeing what me and Chris are up to today. So in today's video, I am doing a couple of benches. I haven't really ran across benches um, very much that I could reupholster, so I'm happy to bring you, yep, this is just a quick video. It's just two of them. One's getting reupholstered. One's just, well, it was a coffee table that I'm turning into a bench. So I hope you enjoy today's content. So, of course, when I first saw this little table, all I thought was bench. It's a little bit on the shorter side. It has those flaps on the side. But once I touched it, I was like, oh, this is so nice and sturdy. Yep, it's got a little bit of wear going on there. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can take these sides off and make a super cute little bench. And look at, yep, they are hinged. Isn't that perfect? So for 809, I thought I was up to the challenge. Now the next little bench, oh my gosh, isn't it already super cute? $5.99 from the Salvation Army. And it is in rather good shape. And then this is one that I just have to remove eight screws to release that top cushion. Let's tackle that first since that is the easy one. So yep, just eight screws to remove. I like when, I don't know about you all, when you're checking things out in the thrift store or garage sale, are you looking how you can take them apart to get them flipped and made over? And then we'll go ahead and remove these felt pads that are on the bottom, though they're a little bit oversized for the size of these legs. Hey, you work with what you got. Now to start taking the other one apart. So yep, it's just got these hinges and then you see it has those pieces of wood that slide in and out to keep the sides of the table up when you want them up. So I just have to get all of this removed. Now I almost thought I hit a roadblock here because I'm like, oh, this hinge is underneath the base. So now what do I do? For now, I'll just keep removing all the screws and the hardware that I can. So it's always nice to have an extra set of eyes because I was like, oh, Chris, what do you think I should do? The hinge is underneath there. Just leave it. Do you think I can tap the base off? And then he noticed that it, he felt as if it was just screwed in. So I'm just removing the side screws and having a little bit of prayer that this is not glued together. Now that was a lucky day. Now I can remove the rest of the hinge. Now it did leave with a little bit of hole, though you probably won't see it too much. Yeah, this piece of wood that I took out, <laughs> yep, it will be a perfect fit. So I just marked with a pencil line where it needs to be cut, and Chris is like, you can cut that with this miter saw. I'm like, okay, you, you all know I don't cut very often. So my first one I did, I didn't cut all the way through because I was a little bit on the nervous side. I am not secure with <laughs> um, cutting tools by any means. But he's like, you can do it. I'm like, okay. So the second cut, I did actually cut all the way through. Now I just actually need to get these in place. And since they're almost a tight fit, they're a little bit, of course, because they slid in and out, I'm just gonna use Durham water putty. And as you see on the other side, I have a piece of masking tape to hold the Durham water putty in, but I'm just filling up the base around where the little block of wood is going to sit in. And then I will get it as smooth as I can and then walk away and let it dry. So as I'm taking a look at the base here, you can tell that this is just basically a paper over some pressed board, though it is super heavy. So to seal that paper in so when I go to paint it, I don't have any wrinkling going on. I'm just going to go ahead in with a couple coats of shellac and that'll get that sealed in place. So now it's time to, to go to this tabletop. Now this has gotten a lot of the stain and the original top coat is worn off plus some scratches. So I'm gonna go in with a 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and work all this as much as I can off. I just, I'm gonna be painting it so I just want it to be nice and smooth.
the 80 grit will leave the grain all raised so I'll go back in with a 220 sandpaper and sand it smoother. Now there was a few deep scratches on the base itself too so I got that sanded off along with my Durham water putty block of wood patch that worked out real nice and so I'm just getting this all cleaned up with some super clean and some hot water getting this piece nice and prepped and ready to get painted. I'm going to go in and spray two coats of shellac on this table only because it's an older, it's got that older stain on it that lots of times the, causes the lighter paint to yellow. And I know this is a beautiful wood and I know some people are probably like, oh, you should stain that. But unfortunately, the stain, two-tone, the stained wood does not sell really well for us. So Before painting this, I'm going to put it the top back onto the base. So as I was working on this bench towards our open house and working on what sells, so coming into the holiday season, I want to start doing things that I, it's fun to play, but it also is a, a good thing to know what your market is and what sells. So white benches <laughs> sell for us. So that's why I'm going in, which is the Kills Paint and Primer in my True Coat 360 handheld sprayer and getting this sprayed up. So now that I have two coats of white on the bottom of these bases, now I can turn this one over and work on getting two coats on the top of this. This is where spraying that shellac is really going to, I'm going to know if I missed a spot because it'll probably yellow on me, but I think I did okay with the shellac spraying. So now I'm going to complete this bench. So we're going to go in with some 220 sandpaper. I'm going to distress the edges. That's that dark wood underneath there. So it's going to pop and all these sharp edges. It is already a cute little bench. And then I'm going to sand any of the surface area nice and smooth to the touch. So after sanding just the base of this one, I'm going, I got it all blown off of the air compressor, wiped the sanding dust down. Now I'm just finishing just the base right now with some Varathane f finishing wax. That's just going to give another level of protection on this white paint. Because on this bigger bench, of course, I'm going to add some detailing so I can't finish it off with any wax quite yet. Another thing that is a good seller for us are just simple white benches with simple grain sack striping. And you all know, if you're regular to our channel, that I love to do grain sack striping. So I just have the regular Dollar Tree masking tape and just finding my first center point with that piece. So now that I have my first piece center, I'm going to lay a piece of the same size masking tape on either side, both sides of that original first centered piece. And we'll remove that center piece of tape because that's where your first paint stripe is going to go. And then I like to rub it really well and make sure that it's good and attached. For my paint color, I'm just going to use my go-to multi-use Apple Barrel Paint in Black. And I know you can paint the original color if you're worried about bleed through, but I have really good luck on a pre-sanded, rub that masking tape down, not a lot of bleed through. So I'm actually going to be using the JRB stencil brush i usually i do the pouncing but i thought i would give this a try so a little bit of a dry you do the dry where you put a little bit of the paint on and you take a lot of the paint off and you do that swirling technique so i think it's working out real nice I never trust myself to remove my tape when my paint is still wet, so I always use the assistance of the blow dryer to make sure that my paint is good and dry. And while my tape is still heated up, and sometimes I use the blow dryer at the same time to reactivate that sticky on that masking tape, I'm going to be removing the tape. And see, as long as you don't have a ton of paint on your brush or on your makeup sponge, whichever you, technique you're using to apply it, you should, with this Dollar Tree masking tape and some pre-sanded wood, I have good luck with the stripes staying nice and crisp. Now for my second stripe, 
it's, I'm going to be doing two smaller stripes on either side of this larger one. So all I'm going to be doing is using that Dollar Tree masking tape again. I'm going to leave myself probably about a quarter of an inch of the black showing, and then that will overlap on the white, and that'll give me the space that's going to be unpainted in between the, the next stripe. So I just go really slowly, just eyeballing that I'm staying nice and level. This is a long surface area, so I can't really lay the tape down all at the same time. And I flip over and I do the exact same thing on the other side. That's why I like the masking tape, because I can see through it. So the next tape placement I'm doing that same exact size so I'm trying to eyeball what I feel is a quarter of an inch I want the stripe the painted stripe to be about the same size as the unpainted in between I'll proceed with the same swirling technique and the dry brush technique where there's just a little paint on using the stencil brush. But now I'm going to go ahead and definitely use the assistance of the blower dryer. Get this paint all nice and dry and I definitely will use the blow dryer as I'm pulling up the tape because I definitely don't want any of my black coming up. I don't plan on overly distressing my stripe. On my next stripe, I'm going to be doing that same thing. So see how I have those three quarter inch. I have the clear with the tape, the clear, then the dark with the black, and then the clear. So that's how I'm spacing my little quarter of an inch here. That's going to be my next stripe. I believe this is why I find grain sack striping so addicting. You can just do so many different options. So I need to seal in the stripes that I just painted. So I'm just going in with some polycrylic as my top coat. So next up is reupholstering the other bench with some drop cloth fabric and I always pre-wash it with no softener. So let's get started removing this fabric and this for some other reason this is a press board and they're really small little staples. So I like to remove the fabric before reupholstering a piece. But I was having a lot of problems because the staples were so small, the, the they weren't really lifting and I was destroying the board more than I was taking a staple out. So I finally just made the executive decision to cut the fabric off and try to pull off as much as I possibly could. So luckily the foam is in really good shape. The batting is in really good shape. This was a nice little thrift find for $6. So I pulled off as much as I could, but the see how tiny they are? I was just destroying the board. I didn't want to make big, even though I'm going to, I'll be able to flip this over and that'll be okay. But I just really could not get those little bitty staples out very well. So do you spend hours working or do like I'm doing right now and just make sure that they're good and hammered in and did the best that I could to get it off. And the foam is definitely thick enough that I got them all hammered in. I think that we are good to go to be able to flip this over. So now I'm going to go ahead and this is that press board. So I'm just going to go ahead and seal it in with some black paint. I just, this is one of the things that I like to do, even though the board is in good shape, it's just going to make it look like a little bit more high end piece if this is painted up black. Then after that black dries, I'm going to seal it in with some Rust-Oleum top coat. That's going to stop a lot of times when I'm using that flat black on items it kind of acts like a chalkboard so if i go to touch it with my hands my handprint is left behind but if i seal it in we are good to go so my next step is to reattach that foam padding to the base so i'm just using some spray adhesive and spraying on the <laughs> which now is the back side of this press board I 
you seen my drop cloth fabric off of Amazon. I had thought that this was a one that I had ordered before. This is a little, they're not all created equal by any means. So I will use it because it is what I have to reupholster this with, but I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. I have never actually had to iron them before uh, reupholstering before, but this one was so thick um, not very airy, so I hope that it takes the stencil paint real well. So, yep, sometimes you just like, okay, this is what God gave me, and this is what I'm going to be working with. But I so right off the bat, I I am cutting off the excess that I do not need, and I know that is a big hunk, but I ended up touching something that got it stained. So right off the bat, I've got some extra to use in the workshop. So now I go in and I cut off little squares so that can release and then not much bunch up so much fabric when you go to tough your corners. I usually like to roll my fabric a little up. <laughs> Uh, under because drop cough fabric usually frays but this one I don't think is going to fray at all it is so thick so I start off right in the middle pulling it tight and then I'll work my way down one of the sides now when it comes to reupholstering something that has foam on it is a little bit bouncy and I kind of have to use my weight to kind of push those staples in it's kind of resisting the staples so sometimes you do have to go back and hammer them in a little bit I do like my electric staple gun. It definitely helps when it comes to reupholstering. Now I'll proceed to do the same thing on the other side, just pulling it nice and tight, but not enough that you get any kind of wrinkles. So when it comes to doing the corners, all I do is take that middle piece, push it in, and then fold the other two over, making a nice little package. And then before putting any stenciling on the top of the pad, I like to attach it, reattach it to the base. That way I know that I'm going to be centered up with the base legs. So now I'm going to be doing some more green side stripes on this cushion also. So I'm going to start right off with finding what my center point is on either side, laying tape on the both sides of it and then removing that middle tape because that will be where my first paint stripe goes and then I just really rub on it making sure that it's good and attached onto the fabric. This is why that Apple Barrel multi-use paint is my go-to. Not only can I do it on wood but I can use it on fabric. So I'm going to be using that same stencil brush and the same technique to apply it. So now usually this drop cloth fabric, yes, it's taking it super well. Usually a lot of times drop cloth fabrics will have a bumpy to it and this one is smooth. It does not have anything. So yep, I guess this one's just going to be nice and dark. I'll share this tip with you. If you get it too dark and you do not like it before sealing it in, you can take sandpaper and tone it down a notch, but we'll see how this looks and if I like it. Then since I'm always impatient for paint to dry and I do not remove my tape before it's dry because I don't know about you, I've had it touch, wet paint touch, where I did not want it to touch and the next thing you know I'm spending time cleaning up. So especially on fabric that's not going to be for, very forgiving because I have not scotch guarded this yet. So yep, I'm going to make sure that this is good and dry. Now for this series of green sack striping, I'm that is this is my outer edge one i'm going to go in and now i'm going to do a smaller one so there again i'm doing that mas masking tape from the dollar tree store i'm eyeballing what i think is a quarter of an inch so that's my unpainted area and then i'm going to go back in and i like to wrap down as far as i can for the eye to see all the way down on the sides and then i'll put lay another piece of tape eyeballing what I think is a quarter of an inch. As long as I take my time and I go slowly, I'm not rushing, it usually turns out okay. So here's a little bit closer up. You can see I'm just eyeballing what each one of the, the empty space of unpainted, the painted is, 
and then now I'm going to do the same color, the same technique of applying it. Now for the next stripe, I want it to be big as the first stripe that I painted. So I laid another piece of masking tape down. I eyeballed what was going to be a quarter inch unpainted. And then now I'm going to butt that masking tape right up to that. Oh, the fun of green sack stripes. You can just change it as you go. So now, yes, do you notice this stencil right in the front? This is one of the JRV stencils that I ordered from Melissa shop. I'll link her shop, the vintage bee design down in my below. First time buyers, I believe she still has a discount code for you that I will share. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure off making sure that I'm centered and then placing masking tape where I know that I have it all nice and centered and it's even, even because I'm gonna go and spray some spray adhesive on the back of this to help keep it in place. This is why my measurements of making sure it even and laying that masking tape down, it was important to me. That way I know as soon as I got that sprayed up that I could go over and I could attach it to my fabric knowing that it is centered. Okay, since I have trust issues for a couple little bit of reinsurance, I'm just gonna put a couple little pieces of tape on the corners. So I feel like it is good and on there. So I'm doing that same swirling technique with just a little bit of paint on my brush and then just trying to go in one direction, another direction, you know, trying to just get my words covered up. Now, I don't believe that these will probably be as dark or they'll be darker in spots, all depending, but I feel like that spray adhesive really has held this down onto this fabric. Here again, I'll use that blow dryer to help dry that paint before removing the stencil. I decided that I like the paint color as is. So now when it comes to this multi-use paint and then you're putting it on fabric, the, right now that paint feels hard and crusty. So to get it to be nice and smooth, you just take a piece of parchment paper, a no steam iron, and for like 30 seconds, you just keep running it over your image, over where you've painted it, and then it will be nice and smooth. Have the paint blended in with the fabric. It feels like it has always been there. Now I like to do a scotch card treatment on the piece, especially on this drop cloth fabric. And I always, when I put that in my retail booth, I always attach a tag to the price tag of that. Yes, this item is scotch guarded. So I do have, I usually spray this outside, but I'm in my shop. You need a well ventilated area, a mask on because this stuff is stinky. So I do have my shop door open. It's nice enough today and with the fans going because yes scotch guard is very stinky but it does what it says i have plenty of these pieces in my own home and have no problem getting spots off So what did you think of my coffee table turned into a bench? When I first saw it, I just, I definitely saw a bench, 
it was sturdy, it was heavy. I'm like, I can take off these sides. I was a little leery at first when I couldn't. I'm like, oh no, those hinges are underneath and I thought it was gonna be glued together and was gonna be more of a project. But God wink moment, nope, it was just screwed in that I could take it apart and remove those hinges and complete this little bench. And yep, sometimes I run out of <laughs> drop cloth and have to wait for Amazon to send me some. And remember you guys, I have an Amazon store now so you can see all the products that I use often that I order from Amazon down in my description box. But yes, I definitely love using drop cloth fabric to reupholster, especially on benches. And as long as you scotch guard it, I've had nobody ever complain of anything fading, anything staining. I, I have the same stuff in my house. I even make pillows out of it. So yes, it's always washed up real well and cleaned up real well and I'm very happy with it. So thanks for watching today's video guys and if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and checking out our content for the first time and you like this kind of content, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye!